We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who's come out tonight. We have a house full and uh, also those that are watching the uh, broadcast on G10 television. Thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, we're going to begin the meeting tonight uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance and the invocation. But at this time, I would like to ask everyone who's a veteran of the United States Armed Forces, if you would please stand. And I got, whoa, 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 back up. I'm not done with you yet. What I would like, what I'd like for you to do, and I know, I know it's kind of hard getting up and down. I know my knees are like that, but anyway, uh, I would like to ask you to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. So, please rise, everyone. Oh, right over here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To give you thanks for this day, to give you thanks for the blessings, the benefits that you so graciously bestow upon us individually and as members of this, the city of Jacksonville. Tonight we give thanks for our veterans that were going to be recognized, our veteran leaders, and for all of our veterans, especially those local ones who continue to serve even after giving up their time and effort in defense of our country, they continue to serve our community, our city, and their fellow veterans, and we give thanks. We also give thanks and pray for our new fire chief and two new deputy chiefs who will be sworn in this evening. We pray as they move into these le leadership roles that you would give them guidance and direction. We pray for those active members of our military who are serving us at this very hour around the world. Keep them safe. Bless their anxious families. And as always, give guidance and direction to our mayor and to our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, veterans, for the pledge tonight, for leading us. Um, first thing we're going to do is adopt the agenda for tonight's meeting, and I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Move approval. Mr. Mayor, number five, if you'd please remove that. We want to do some further work on that, please. Number five on the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to Thanks, approve the agenda, removing item number five. <clears throat> okay, any discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. The agenda is hereby adopted. All right, we have a presentation tonight, and I'm going to step over here in just a moment. We're honored to here tonight uh, in the presence of our veterans and on behalf of the council and myself, we want to welcome you all to City Hall uh, and to this meeting. Our veterans are examples of courage, sacrifice, and service. Tonight's recognition is an opportunity for us to recognize those members of our community who have worn the uniforms of service to our country and to recognize veterans and others who continue to serve our veterans by volunteering their time and service with a local veteran organization. I was so proud to be part of the Veterans Parade this year. Great job, by the way, uh, Roland Thunder, for organizing that parade. I saw the enthusiasm of the public to our veterans, and I hope even more come out and salute the veterans next year. The city is proud of our bond with our local veterans and with the Council of Veterans Organizations. This is our 32nd annual Veterans Recognition Ceremony. Since 1988, the city has asked each veteran group to nominate a veteran or member from their organization who has demonstrated outstanding volunteerism, support, and leadership during the past year for recognition as their outstanding veteran of the year. At this time, the city would like to show our respect and gratitude to our local veterans by presenting the annual Veterans Awards along with an outstanding uh, citizen lapel pin. 
So at this time, I would like to ask the council to join me to help congratulate each of our outstanding veterans of 2019. And I'll ask Dr. Woodruff here to announce the names and accomplishments of the honorees. Thank you, Dr. Woodruff. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Good evening. American Legion Post 78 Swansboro, Janice Grinero, please come forward and be recognized. As Janice comes forward, she is a veteran of the United States Marine Corps, a loyal and hardworking member of the Post. She is the finance officer, adjutant, and serves on the Youth Welfare Committee. She drives DAV 16 approximately 600 hours per year taking veterans to VA appointments. Please join me in thanking Janice. American Legion Auxiliary Unit 265. Unfortunately, Ms. Rogers is not able to be here tonight due to an unexpected illness but she's being recognized as the outstanding volunteer. Ms. Rogers joined the auxiliary in 1997, has donated numerous hours to the Onslow County Fair. She's handed out poppies in remembrance of veterans, assisted veterans with errands and appointments, and has obtained donations to help veterans in hospice and in hospitals. Please join me in thanking Ms. Rogers. AMVETS Post 225, Samuel Gupton. Please come forward and be recognized. Mr. Gupton has been the treasurer of the post for the past 12 years, has served in other various positions, has also chaired the board of the ROT students at nine schools throughout Eastern North Carolina. He prepares all the awards for each ROTC recipient and personally delivers them to each school. Please join me in thanking, in thanking Samuel. <clears throat> Beirut Memorial Chapter 642, Grant Beck. Grant is not with us this evening, but he has asked John Kootner, Coot, anybody, John Cooney. Cooney. He's asked John Cooney to accept this on his behalf. Patriot Grant Beck has been commander of the Beirut Memorial Chapter 642 for the past six years, excels in being part of the chapter's Americanism efforts by instructing school children about flag etiquette, history, and respect. Please join me in thanking Grant. Camp Lejeune Military Retiree Council, Chris Allen, please come forward and be recognized. Ms. Allen does an awesome job in representing the Military Widows Association. She keeps the association well informed on all programs, all the needs and events of Camp Lejeune Military Retirees Council. Please join me in thanking Ms. Allen. Disabled American Veterans, Onslow County Chapter 16, Randall Cox. Randall, please come forward. Randall is a retired United States Marine, has been a member of the chapter since 2017, gives 100% on all things that he does. He stays late to make sure the job is always complete. An outstanding vet, an outstanding Marine. Please join me in recognizing Mr. Cox.
Disabled American Veterans Auxiliary, Onslow County, Chapter 16. Bonnie Williams, member. Ms. Williams, please come forward and be recognized. Ms. Williams moved here from Ohio. She said she got tired of shoveling snow and decided she'd come down and visit her son, who is a United States Marine. And by the way, she also came to visit her grandchildren. Every Friday, she's in the kitchen making preparations for bingo. So if you don't know how to spell bingo or play it, please see Ms. Williams after this ceremony. <laughs> She's exactly the kind of person every organization needs. Please join me in thanking Ms. Williams. <laughs> Division of Workforce Solutions Veterans Unit, Nicole Mason. Ms. Mason, please come forward and be recognized. Ms. Mason is a Disabled Veterans Outreach Program Specialist for the North Carolina Department of Commerce Division of Workforce Solutions. Her assistance to veterans have been identified as having significant barriers, as helping overcome significant barriers to employment. She participates, participated this year in 341 community outreach activities. Please join me in thanking Ms. Mason. Fleet Reserve Association Branch 208, Timothy, Timothy Manchester. Shipmate, please come forward and be recognized. Shipmate Manchester is directly responsible for the branch's social media and the branch's constant presence in the community. He continues to ensure that members who are unable to attend meetings are kept up to date on branch functions by his, acknowledged, by his advanced knowledge of various social media platforms. Please join me in thanking Shipmeg Manchester. <laughs> the next gentleman is not here. Loyal escorts of the Green Garter NC1 Tar Heel Chapter, Carl Heckbarth. My understanding is someone has volunteered to accept that for Carl. If you are, please come forward. We have two ladies coming forward. Mr. Heckbarth has gone above and beyond serving as the 2018 WMA Convention Treasurer, both during and after. To close the chapter's books, he worked many hours over several months to ensure all records were correct and accurate. He's provided great design, he has provided great dedication to the Tar Heel chapter. Please join me in thanking Carl. Marine Corps League Detachment 262, Steve Ryan, please come forward and be recognized. In addition to being a great dancer, <laughs> retired Chief Petty Officer Ryan served in the United States Navy for 22 years. He's a generous member of the League, always ready to assist with fundraisers and meetings. He was Vice President until recent illness sidelined him. Please join me in thanking Mr. Ryan. <laughs> Marine Corps League Auxiliary, Deborah Ray, Deborah Ryan, member, please come forward. As you'll notice, Deborah is much better looking than Steve Ryan. <laughs> But she also dances better than Steve. You're right. Ms. Ryan is always there to help the organization and the community. She goes above and beyond, especially during recent hurricane efforts. Her winning smile and never say no attitude makes a great difference to us all, especially to the members of her auxiliary. Please join me in thanking Ms. Ryan. Military Order of the Kuti, Russell Spurlock, Sr. Please come forward and be recognized. For some people, volunteering is about giving. However, for Mr. Spurlock, it is not about giving, it's about
the way he lives his life. He's been a member of the MOC since 1996, council member of MOC 5 Supreme, and a past grand of North Carolina. He's an unselfish person. He devotes many hours to giving and improving the community. Overall, he fulfills the MOC's motto, keep them smiling in beds of white. Please join me in thanking him. Monford Point Marine Association Incorporated. Takesha Smiley, please come forward and be recognized. Ms. Smiley, a former Marine, has committed her knowledge, experience, and professionalism to the betterment of the association by becoming the Monford Point Marine Muse Museum Director. Thanks to her hard work and support, our community will soon be able to once again learn about the legacy of the Monford Point Marines. Please join me in thanking Ms. Smiley. NAVVETS Incorporated, Melvin Conyard, please come forward and be recognized. There you are. Good to see you tonight, sir. Mr. Conyard retired from the United States Marine Corps after 30 years of service as a master gunnery sergeant. As a member of NAVVETS, he is always reliable, dependable, and ready to assist. He supports all the goals of the chapters and works every day to make our community better for vets and for all citizens. Please join me in thanking Melvin. <laughs> Non-commissioned officers association, Down East chapter 906, Paul Mefker. Mr. Mefker, please come forward and be recognized. He joined the chapter in 1991, has served as the chairman for the past nine years. He volunteers over 150 hours of time each year, both, on, both to assist active duty and retired military personnel. He continues to display the ideals and principles expected by someone who deeply cares about others, about his community, and about his fellow Marines. Please join me in thanking Paul. Rolling Thunder, Chapter NC-5, Stephen Smith. Please come forward and be recognized. Mr. Smith is a retired United States Marine, a retired Jacksonville police detective. He is a master mason and shriner, serving as a roadrunner transportation. Burned and crippled children are often supported and transported to their various appointments, not only in the local area, not only in North Carolina, but around the country. To date, he has made 232 transports of these children. Please join me in thanking Stephen. Swansboro Marine Corps League Detachment 1407, Joe Beam. Please come forward and be recognized. A Vietnam veteran, he served in the United States Marine Corps for four years. He joined the League in 1999, became a life member the same year. He served as a sergeant at arms for the last three years. He attends all the events. He is the first to volunteer and always has a winning smile. Please thank Joe. The American Legion, Burton Cowell Post 265, David DePapola, please come forward and be recognized. <coughs> David served in more than 30 countries during his 25-year career in the United States Marine Corps. He's been a member of Post 265 since November 2010, has been a vital part of keeping the bingo program going. Let's thank David for all he does for this community. Thank you. 
The Captain John C. Carr Veteran Resource Center, Samuel Gumpton, please come forward and be recognized again. The Resource Center reported that Samuel is their strongest member, has raised many dollars to provide assistance to our local veterans. After recent hurricanes, he provided weeks of his own time assisting veterans in the recovery process. He has enriched the lives of many, and every day he looks for ways to give. Let's once again thank Samuel. VFW Post 9133. Unfortunately, Edward Fletcher is not here tonight, but I understand Dan Grace will accept on his behalf. Dan, please. Mr. Fletcher is the post chaplain and house committee chairman. He has overseen nearly $100,000 in renovation to the post to make the building safer and more enjoyable for the members and their guests. He works tirelessly, is the epitome of what a member should be. Please join me in thanking Edward. <laughs> VFW Auxiliary, Jennifer Carton. Now she is not here. Joanne Jones is going to accept on her behalf. You look very nice tonight, thank you. Jennifer was active with the Post before she became a member. She has dedicated herself to taking care of the veterans by cooking for them several times a week. Sometimes she even donates her own food. She's the owner of Stars and Stripes Salon. Gentlemen, that is not Stars and Stripes Saloon. <laughs> She's the owner of Stars and Stripes Salon and is always willing to help any veteran in need. Please join me in thanking Jennifer. Women's Marine Association, NC1 Tar Hill Chapter. Jalisa Neva, please come forward and be recognized. <coughs> a full-time student as well as a veteran. She participates in the community with many organizations while assisting veterans with resources in the VA system. She also visits the Veteran State Nursing Home and gives her time to local scout troops. Please join me in thanking Ms. Nevelle. <laughs> the City of Jacksonville Veteran Liaison. The city's appointed veteran liaison is Luis De Jesus. De Jesus. Every time. I never get it right. You know, every year Luis gets better looking. And every year the mayor and council and the staff say the same thing. A liaison is supposed to do a lot of things. Be a liaison. This is a man who takes it seriously. He keeps the mayor and council informed on a regular basis. He visits City Hall. He comes by and talks to me. He comes by and talks to other staff members. He sets up appointments with the mayor so that he can keep this city government directly and correctly informed about the needs of the veterans in this community. Whether I can pronounce his last name or not is not important. What's important is the fact that this is a man who serves you and he serves our community. And Lewis, we say thank you very much. Hey, Suze. Hey, Suze. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good. It's been my honor to recognize these people. At this point, I'd like to ask the mayor and council if they will return to their seats. Thank you very much.
All right, so I'm going to do something a little different than what we normally do. We're going to take a break after the first presentation. I know some of you came just for the presentation, and we got people standing up in the back of the room. So I'm going to give you all the opportunity to make a break for it now if you want to. But you're, you're welcome to stay. Uh, but that'll be a good time. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming, every one of you. Wait a minute. We are back in session, so breaks over. Back to work. Okay. Um, I have another co commendation or presentation tonight. This is for a civilian commendation. I would like to ask Chief Mike Inero, Director of Public Safety, and Walter Scott, if you would join me up front here. On January 23, 2018, Mr. Walter Scott was at Sam's Used Furniture to confer with a colleague about an upcoming event. At that time, the business was undergoing a temperature test on a mattress which was being conducted by a state official. While in another part of the building, Mr. Scott noted, noticed a burning odor and went to determine the source of the odor. Mr. Scott and the business owner expressed concern to the state official that the fumes were increasing and there was smoke emitted for, emitting from the test chamber. The men opened the door to the chamber and observed flames coming from the mattress. They attempted to extinguish the fire with a water hose and Mr. Scott left the building to contact 911. After calling 911, Mr. Scott re-entered the building and directed others to move several vendor, vendor carts outside as they contained propane containers. The building contained several small apartments on the second floor. Mr. Scott went upstairs and called for everyone to exit the building. Receiving no response from two of the apartment units, Mr. Scott kicked in the doorways and checked to ensure there was no one inside. He conferred with others present about the tenants and returned again to the second floor to ensure that there were no tenants there. Mr. Scott then left the building without harm or injury. The fire spread quickly and the building was completely destroyed. Mr. Scott risked his personal safety to ensure that there were no tenants left in the burning structure. His assistance during an emergency is commendable and very worthy of the Civilian Commendation Award. So, Walter, I'd like to present you with, this is pretty prized possession right here. Uh, there's a letter of what I was just talking about and then the Civilian Commendation Award. Thank you so much Thank you, for your service to your community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next presentation this evening is uh, for National Hospice Palliative Care Month, and I'd like to invite Tiffany Weiss Wissinger and Josh Sprague from Community Home Care and Hospice to join me up front. November is Nas uh, National Hospice Palliative Care Month. The city has issued a proclamation to help encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. And I will read this proclamation. Whereas Lower Cape Fear Hospice offers patient-centered, compassionate care, ensuring pe uh, people dignity, choice, and quality of life, and whereas utilizing an interdisciplinary team-oriented approach to treatment 
expert medical care, quality symptom control, and comprehensive pain management as a foundation of care allows patients to live fully and make more meaningful moments until the end, surrounded by loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. And whereas providers are advocates and educators who tend to, to patients' emotional, spiritual, and family needs, as well as provide advanced care planning and helps individuals begin the conversation about the care they want. And whereas Lower Ho Cape Fear Hospice, a nonprofit agency, serves more than 6,000 patients and families in North Carolina and South Carolina each year, including residents of Jacksonville dealing with life-limiting illness. And whereas engaging community members through educational events and volunteer activities to encourage all people to learn more about options of care and to share their wishes with family, loved ones, and their healthcare professionals. Now, therefore, I, Sammy Phillips, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, do hereby proudly proclaim November 2019 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month in the city of Jacksonville, and I encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. And I will present this to two of you. you get a picture together. How's that? The next presentation this evening will be for uh, Country Club Villa's Clean and Green Award. And I would like to invite Pam Trafton up uh, from our community, community Engagement Office of Livable Neighborhoods to join me up front. Hey, Pam. Tracy. Oh, where's Tracy? There's Tracy right there. Come on up, Tracy. Also, we have uh, Marilyn Gresham and Gary Johns, if you'll join me, or join us. I'm going to let y'all flank. There you go. For the time being. <clears throat> the Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award is presented to citizens for their outstanding neighborhood cleanup and beautification efforts. Community engagement has identified Country Club Villas, formerly known as Myrtlewood, as a target neighborhood to foster relationships with the citizens for the purpose of improving the overall quality of life. They have initiated relationships with property owners, property managers, tenants, surrounding businesses, and most recently the University of North Carolina Ch at Chapel Hill School of Government to promote revitalization opportunities. On October 26, 2019, a neighborhood cleanup took place. Through their efforts in partnership with the city staff, Country Club Villas cleanup was a success, and we want to thank each of them for their helping in making our city clean and green. And I have for them each. Let's see. I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> This is to Marilyn Gresham for their, her outstanding neighborhood cleanup and beautification efforts. And we thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> and then we have Gary Johns here. Thank you. Also, I'd like to mention the other uh, ones that could not make it tonight. And uh, we'll get their certificate to them, but that would be Ruben Laurent. Uh, Ramon Rosario, uh, James Gro Rokan, and Donald and Gloria Parker. Yeah. Thank you.
The next presentation I'd like to make tonight is a great honor to do, and I'd like to ask Chief Mike Unero, Director of Public Safety, Michael Lazaro, Mayor Pro Tem, to join me up, up front. Since you made the trip, you're going to you get to stand up here, too. Where's Ashley? Yeah, Ashley. I saw Ashley. And, uh, and Patrick. Lewis Pat. And Who else? And Ronnie Dorn. Ronnie. And then uh, in the back we have uh, Sergeant Porter. And you, you tell Lieutenant me. Kellum. <clears throat> come on, come on up. Lieutenant Kellum. Sergeant Porter. Sergeant Porter. Because I know this is a definitely a group effort here. Oh, Colonel Lewis. Where's Grubber? There he is. Captain Cap. Captain Cap. Captain Cap. Captain Cap. Captain Cap. Mike. <clears throat> right, the International Association of Chiefs of Police has selected the Jacksonville Police Department as a recipient of the 2019 Leadership and Community Policing Award. The award recognizes promising practices that utilize effective and long-lasting partnerships to make local, national, and global communities safer. A delegation that included Jacksonville Mayor Pro Tem Mike Lazaro, Public Safety Director Mike Canero, accepted the award during the IACP's annual banquet at the 2019 IACP Annual Conference and Exposition in Chicago in late October. The award honors agencies for programs that exemplify the principles of community policing and strengthen community trust through active and inclusive community collaboration. Jacksonville Police Department's project to re-engineer use of force principles, policy and procedures resulted in more positive interactions, partnerships, and improved problem solving in the Jacksonville community. The action to reduce use of force and arrests was in part inspired by the One City campaign, which encourages all to treat one another with respect and civility. I might need some help carrying this award here. Heavy. What do I do? Give you a Civil War cannonball? <laughs> yeah, you better help me with that. You don't mind if I get fingerprints? No. Just go. Uh, see. Anyway, take my word for it. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's a beautiful award, but it does not want to come out of this box at all. Um, but this is a great honor for our city, Jacksonville, North Carolina, to be recognized as one of the best police departments as far as community policing is in the country, in the whole country. So, Chief, uh, with all your efforts, with the staff, your staff's efforts, and I know every one of them, and I know they all work very hard towards this, and Mike, appreciate you going up there in my place. And uh, But anyway, what a... What a what a uh, token of excellence here this, this represents. Uh, my hat's off to you, Chief. What a great job that y'all do. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I'd like to just take a moment to, uh, to thank the mayor and council. I think this journey began a couple years ago when we started talking in, in some workshops about use of force and the use of body cameras. And, uh, and I want to I commend our council for looking forward and, and talking about the results and talking about what is important, and that was reductions of use of force. So... Um, and making investments in the, in the police department to do that. Uh, Colonel Lewis brought some expertise with the Marine Corps, and we were able to incorporate that in some of our use of force, and we saw a significant drop in use of force over the last several years, about 147%. So um, my hat's off to the officers. I was going to a call, the, or driving the other day, they were going to a call and they were working on a crisis situation and they were gathering information before they even got to the scene, which is part of the process that we use to reduce, uh, re reduce use of force. And it, I, we, had some, we had some PowerPoints there that actually show the reduction from 2012 down into 2018. And then uh, 
in addition, we had some uh, photographs from the IACP. And I think what's important is when we talk about national, this was actually international. Uh, the, the large agency that won was from Queensland, Australia. And so uh, Jacksonville was recognized as one of three cities for the Leadership and Community Policing Award, one in Ohio, one in, uh, in, in the, and the other in Queensland. So That's thank great. you very much, and uh, I appreciate all the efforts of not just the police department, but our community, because our community is the community policing process. Thank you, Mayor. Chief Yanera, don't get comfortable. <laughs> I need you to join me back up here again. Um, I would also like to ask uh, our fire engineer one, Colby Kennedy, and firefighter two, Kevin Thompson, to join us up front, please. I'm going to ask the new fire chief to come up for this one also. Almost new fire chief. Almost. <laughs> On Tuesday, October 1st, 2019 at 2.58 a.m., Jacksonville Communications received an emergency 911 call from Rescue One. The City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services responded to the call at a business on the 1200 block of Hargett Street. Rescue One crew Fire Engine 1 Colby Kennedy and Firefighter 2 Kevin Thompson had just cleared a first responder call and were re returning to Station 1. While passing through the area of New River Shopping Center with their windows down, they detected what they thought was the odor of a fire. They began a check of the area and after a few minutes, they located fire coming from a small hole in a window and smoke coming from the building. Fire Engineer 1 Kennedy advised Jacksonville communications to dispatch all units for a working commercial structure fire. Fire Engineer 1 Kennedy and Firefighter 2 Thompson donned their, the rest of their personal protection equipment, forced the door to the affected residence, and kept the fire in check through the venting fire window with a two and a half gallon water uh, can, water can. Upon arrival of the Engine 1 fire Fire Engineer 1 Kennedy and Firefighter 2 Thompson joined the crew of Engine 1, made entry, and finished extinguishing the fire and conducted a primary search. They, they remained on scene through the incident checking exposures, performing overhaul, and assisting with the investigation. Due to their determination to locate a potential fire situation, they were able to locate and mitigate a fire that had the potential for a huge property loss. Their quick thinking decision-making, and hard work led to a very positive outcome for this situation and is worthy of the agency's meritorious unit citation. So, with that said, Thank you, guys. Great work. Um, uh, Chief Yanero. Getting plenty of exercise. All right, so <clears throat> now brings me to a, a presentation here. We're gonna do a promotion, 
and we're doing a swearing in of our Jacksonville for our Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. And at this time, I would like to ask Edward T. Tallman from the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services to join me up front. And family. And family. Brian, you're you're a volunteer firefighter. Come on. <laughs> Need you up here. T was born and raised right here in Jacksonville, North Carolina, and is a third generation firefighter. He gra graduated from Jacksonville High School in 1995. Coastal Carolina Community College with an associate degree in fire protection technology in May of 2011, and, Fay and Fayetteville State University with a bachelor's degree in a fire and emergency services administration in 2014. T joined the F Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on April 24th of 2000 and has served as a firefighter, driver operator, captain, and battalion chief. He holds certifications as a North Carolina Firefighter II an EMT, technical rescue, uh, vehicle and machinery ropes, uh, water rescue in confined spaces, Fire Officer 3, North Carolina Chief Officers Executive Development Program, and IAPC, Leadership and Public Safety Organizations. T is a member of the Jacksonville Technical Rescue Team. T and his wife Erin have been married for 15 years and are the proud parents of daughter Lillian, who is 13 years old. And you two are going to help us with the uh, actual ceremony here. So I'm going to, yeah. you got it. Okay. So I guess we need to share the microphone here. <clears throat> All right, if you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, uh, Edward Tolman. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will be alert and vigilant. That I'll be alert and vigilant. In performing my duties. In performing my duties. As chief of the city of Jacksonville. As the chief of the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. That I will not be influenced. That I will not be influenced. In any matter. In any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge and execute. Discharge and execute. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As chief of the city of Jacksonville. As the chief of the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. According to the best of my skills. According to the best of my skills. Abilities. Abilities. And judgment. And judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's make it, let's make it, well, it is official now. You just need to put on the uh, accoutrements of the job. No Who wants to do the badge? Me. Y'all don't wear, <laughs> y'all don't wear vests like the policemen do, so no, be careful. Okay, I'm going to help you out. Let's do that again.
Chief, look good in your uniform. Look good with all that brass there. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Marshall Stuff. Oh, uh, by the way, we, you're, you're, oh. you've got duties to fulfill up here. <laughs> Okay, so now I would like to uh, swear in another uh, one of our fire and emergency service people to the position of deputy fire chief who will be working closely with Chief Tallman here. And at this time, I'd like to ask Amy Procopio, she would join me up front with her family. Let me tell you a little bit about our new deputy fire chief here. She graduated from Taylor Center High School in 1996, Coastal Carolina Community College with an associate's degree in applied science, fire protection technology in 2003, and Fayetteville State University with a bachelor's degree in fire and emergency services administration in 2014. Amy joined the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services on January 14, 2000, and has served as a fire, firefighter, driver operator, captain, platoon training officer, and battalion chief. She holds certifications as firefighter one and two, instructor two, fire and life safety education one and two, fire inspector level one, surface water rescue, technical rescue or vehicle machinery rescue, confined space, ropes, and water rescue, driver operator of aerials, fire one, fire officer one, two, and three, Amy is also a member of the Jacksonville Technical Rescue Team. She and her husband, Mario, have been married for seven and a half years and are proud of their children, Thomas, 18, Molly, 13, and Isabella, 6. Amy's husband, Mario, and her children will assist in the pinning ceremony, and I assume that, Isabella, you're going to hold the Bible for your mother, correct? She is. She if you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Amy Procopio. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I would be vigilant. That er, I would be vigilant and alert. And alert in performing my duties. In performing my duties as deputy chief of the city of Jacksonville. As deputy chief of the city of Jacksonville. Fire and emergency services. Fire and emergency services. That I will not be influenced. That I will not be influenced in any matter. In any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States. Of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and execute. Discharge and execute. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As Deputy Chief of the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. As Deputy Chief of the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. According to the best of my skills. According to the best of my skills. Abilities. Abilities. And judgment. And judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you.
Amy, congratulations. We have a, another promotion, this one also to Deputy Fire Chief, and I would like to ask uh, Sean Hayes if he would join me up front, please, and your family. Okay, a little bit about Sean. Sean was born in Jacksonville, North Carolina, and graduated from Dixon High School in 2004. Sean joined the department December 30th, 2005, and since then he has served as a firefighter, driver operator, training and standards division chief, fire marshal, and assistant fire chief. Sean graduated from Coastal Carolina Community College with an associate degree in arts in 2008. The University of North Carolina, Wilmington with a bachelor of arts education in 2011. Fayetteville State University with a Bachelor of Science in Fire and Emergency Services uh, Administration in 2015, and UNC Pembroke with a Master's of Public Administration in 2017. He holds certifications as a North Carolina Firefighter, North Carolina EMT Basic, North Carolina Fire Officer II, North Carolina Qualified Fire Instructor II, North Carolina Certified Fire and Arson Investigator, North Carolina Fire Inspector III, NC Fire Prevention School graduate, NC driver slash operator of pumps and aerials, uh, NC technical rescuer, VMR, uh, CPSE level two, peer assessor, and UNCW Strategic Management Academy. Sean is also a member of the Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services Fire Investigation Unit. Sean and his wife Patricia have been married for eight years. Sean's wife Patricia will also assist in the uh, pinning ceremony. So with that, I'm going to pass you the Bible there. And Sean, if you raise your right hand and repeat after me. <clears throat> I state your name. I, Sean Hayes. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will be alert and vigilant. That I will be alert and vigilant. In performing my duties. In performing my duties. As Deputy Chief of the ja City of Jacksonville. As Deputy Chief of the City of Jacksonville, Fire and Emergency Services. Fire and Emergency Services. That I will not be influenced. That I will not be influenced. In any matter. In any matter. On account of personal bias or prejudice. On account of personal bias or prejudice. That I will support and maintain. That I will support and maintain. The Constitution and laws of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina. Not inconsistent therewith. Not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. And execute the duties of my office. And execute the duties of my office. As Deputy Fire Chief of the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. As Deputy Fire Chief of the City of Jacksonville Fire and Emergency Services. According to the best of my skills. According to the best of my skills. Abilities. Abilities. And judgment. And judgment. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. You can do it. She knows how to do this, doesn't she?
Congratulations, Sean. Thank you. Let's get a let's get a photograph of you. Okay. great pride to introduce to you the new leadership of the Fire and Emergency Services of the City of Jacksonville. proud to present to you the command staff of public safety for the city of Jacksonville. Now, Ronnie, if you and Patrick and Ashley would step back, I'd like to invite all of the firemen who are here. Would you please come far. and stand behind your new leadership team? <laughs> yes, we are. We burnt the pages. You can stand on any line you want to, sir. All people in the back. Hold that pose. We still got plenty to go. It's with great pleasure that I tell you the fire and emergency services are there day and night. They're the people who climb through windows when you're asleep to save your life. They're the people who get the cats out of the trees. But most importantly, they're there every second that you need them. So please join me in thanking fire and emergency services personnel. Any other pictures before we break? Last call. Thank you all very much. We're proud of all of you. <laughs> okay, that brings us to our first section of public comment for this evening. And it, on the sheet, no one has signed up. Uh, did anyone come in after the sheet was taken up who wishes to speak? If so, please indicate by raising your hand. Okay, so we're going to go now and move on to adoption of the minutes and the consent items. We have minutes from October 22nd, 2019 regular meeting and the November 6, 2019 regular workshop. And we have uh, four, excuse me, we have six Seven. consent items. Right. Move for adoption of the minutes and consent items. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Next, we have our non, on our non-consent agenda, we have item number eight. And this is the acceptance of the public improvements at Marine Federal Credit Union on Western Boulevard. And 
Mr. John Park, uh, Carter will be presenting this item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In 2001, Marine Federal Credit Union was deeded the Western Boulevard property on which their main office sits, which is depicted in this uh, photo, aerial photo before you. As part of that deed, Marine Federal Credit Union was granted a 60-foot perpetual, non-exclusive ingress, egress, and utility easement from Western Boulevard to the back of their property. That is shown by the red line on that uh, aerial. Marine Federal Credit Union paved and, put, and put their utilities in and developed this as a, city, as a street, and I will call it a street at that time. In two, and this is the actual uh, plans that were uh, submitted to the city. And again, the red streak there shows Marine Federal Credit Union is at the top. Aldi's location is at the bottom, and you see where Western Boulevard is denoted. In 2012, the underlying ownership, or what we call the fee, of this easement was transferred to the city as part of a 200-plus acre donation. But prior to this donation, the owners of this underlying fee allowed Brabham Avenue to intersect into this, quote, street, end quote, and become a T intersection instead of needing a cul-de-sac, which they would have needed at that time. Additionally, as pointed out in your agenda item, this street has a signalized intersection at Western Boulevard. That intersection on the other side of the street is known as Forum Road. The city received a written request, and of course this property was deeded, as I said, uh, as part of a 200 plus acre tract in 2012. The city has received a written request from Marine Federal Credit Union, from the Onslow Memorial Hospital Foundation, and from Sturgeon City, requesting that the city accept this easement area, this area in red, as a city street and to name it, quote, Marty Goldman Way, end quote. Marty Goldman passed away a few weeks ago and was active in all of these organizations and was an active member of the city's Board of Adjustment. He also served in, in the United States Navy and his biography is attached to the agenda item. Part of your city code as in section 23-84 as far as naming buildings and streets says the following. In choosing names of streets, parks, or public facilities after individuals, consideration shall be given to the persons who are dece deceased only. Special consideration shall be given to the contributions the person has made to the city, state, or country. And input from neighborhood organizations in the immediate vicinity of the park or facility shall be sought, and in the case of a street name or a park name. The council is asked this evening to accept this easement as a city street and to name it the Marty Goldman Way. If council takes this action, then we will record a deed showing a street dedication to ensure that this is shown on the Onslow County GIS as Marty Goldman Way. Again, I'd be glad to answer any questions that council may have. Let me go to the next slide. Council, any questions of Mr. Carter at this point? That's a larger. Thank you. Mayor, I move that we accept the public improvements at Marine Federal Credit Union on Western Boulevard as presented in honor of Marty Goldman. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comments? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, if I may, it's appropriate that on this night we honor our military veterans. We honor Marty Goldman, who spent over 28 years of his life in the United States Navy as a Master Chief. Marty is a man who loved and lived for his family, Brenda and the children. A man who served his community with passion and total commitment. A man who served his country with honor. I felt privileged to have Marty as a friend. First met him as a member of the Military Affairs Committee, which was just one of the many community activities in which he was involved. Truly, Marty is the epitome of community involvement. In 2013, when I decided to run again for city council after finishing my book on how to run an un unsuccessful campaign for city office, I turned to the man who I knew could get things done. Marty, I asked, how would you like to be the treasurer of my campaign? Marty asked what it would entail. I said, taking care of finances and, you know, acting as campaign manager, to help me get elected. Marty agreed, and it soon turned out that it was not him helping me, but rather me helping him. <laughs> he took charge. 
Marty has always put 110% of his energy in a task. It was Marty doing things his way, and like the Sinatra song, My Way, he did it, what he had to do, and saw it through without exemption. He planned each charted course, <clears throat> each careful step along the byway, and more, much more than this, he did it his way. It's only fitting that we name this road Marty Goldman Way. Amen. <clears throat> Other comments? I think you summed it up very well, Jerry, and uh, with your. Um, I, I would be remiss, though, if I didn't say that uh, I really thought the world of that fella, Marty. He could keep you in stitches all the time. He had that booming voice I'll never forget as long as I live. Uh, I had the opportunity to play golf with him on several occasions, and uh, he was just a bull, as much bulldog at that as he was everything else he got involved in. But uh, his presence in this, in this community is going to be sorely missed. Marty had a real problem telling you his opinion, too, didn't he? <laughs> yes, he did. Marty Goldman Way. <laughs> he will be missed. It was an honor to serve with him on many committees over the years and uh, definitely a true uh, leader in, in the community. And uh, he's definitely left an impact. Great fellow. Motion. We have a motion, and now we'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, am I supposed to vote? <laughs> Thank you, guys, for seeing that opportunity to be able to name something after after Marty. Okay, so we're going to talk Bulldogs now. And Glenn, he's going to present this. We're going to designate the U.S. Marine Corps English Bulldog as the official mascot of the city of Jacksonville. Glenn, it's all of you. Nice to have this group behind you, let me tell you. <laughs> well, you, these people know the story better than I do. But in 1918, at Bella Wood, the Germans described the fierce Marines as the roughly translated devil dogs. And consequently, it stuck. And the Marines wore it with pride. And in doing so, in 1922, they adopted the Bulldog into enlisted into the Marine Corps. And they used the Bulldog in advertising. The Bulldog is the symbol of the Marine Corps. And so we're asking the City Council tonight to help um, name the, designate the Bulldog as the official mascot of the city. This came about as a result of our partnership with the Jacksonville Onslow's um, Arts Council. As you know, we were, the Tourism Development Authority was asked to help out and to um, see that they um, carry forth in matters there. And they're going to use this as a project to make money and provide public art. And the first bulldog was commissioned to um, Bernie Rossage. And as you know, it's out in the atrium. And we so proudly brought it out there into the, um, into the world, of, um, to the public at the Veterans Parade. This is Jiggs, the first bulldog that was joined into the Marine Corps. And this is our bulldog with Reuben the Bulldog. Reuben has 125,000 subscribers to his YouTube channel. And he brought quite a little crowd out there with him um, as a result of this thing. He's quite the antic. And so it is with deep respect that we ask that the city council consider designating the bulldog, English bulldog, as the official mascot of the city of Jacksonville. Thank you. Any questions? So moved. Motion. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We got. We are now. The, we now have a bulldog as a mascot. Mm -hmm. Herbert. There you go. I like this photo. All right. That brings us to our uh, reports for this evening. I'm going to start with Mr. Warden. Proud to be here, Mayor. Thank you for having you here. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Bittner. Nice being here. Mayor Potem Lazar. No report other than, uh, Mayor, thank you for allowing me to uh, attend the IACP uh, in representing you and council. It was really a learning uh, experience uh, to have gone there. 
It's amazing. 18,000 different agencies and over 10,000 participants. It really makes you realize how big, how big that whole thing is and, and how much of an honor it was for us to be recognized in that environment, Jacksonville, North Carolina. I think that's a testament to, to our department. And so uh, thank you for allowing me to do that. Definitely a huge recognition. It's for nice to be on the map for, for good things, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know, we seem to get on there quite often for good things. Here, here lately. Point, so. I, can remember, I can remember years ago we'd get on for the bad things. That's right? true. <laughs> Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, members of council, uh, tonight we had the privilege of recognizing outstanding veterans. But our community also had a very special occasion two Saturdays ago when we had the Veterans Day Parade. What we'd like to do is show you some slides from the Veterans Day Parade. As you can see, the crowd really appreciates the fact that we're the home of the Marines and Sailors. I believe you can recognize the gentleman in the sunglasses, and you can also probably recognize the gentleman back there on the bicycle. Mm. But the Grand Marshal was none other than our own Colonel Kopka. And we're certainly proud of his service and the proud of all of the Marines who, whether they're active today or whether they have retired, the service they give to ensure that we have freedom every day is something that many Americans forget. But I can assure you that the people in Jacksonville never forget. Just as we have said at the Beirut Memorial that we will never forget, this community remembers every day, and especially on Veterans Day, what American freedom is truly all about. It is about paying the price. We had tremendous citizen participation. We had great floats. We had great bands. We had wonderful spectators. And again, many of the people that you recognize tonight, you see in the pictures. And of course, here is our own new mascot. And up there to the right is Reuben the Bulldog. And if you haven't had the pleasure of tuning in to his Facebook or whatever you call those things, it's truly hilarious to see Reuben and his owner in their environment. We commend Rolling Thunder for a phenomenal effort in putting this parade together. And we always salute and thank the Marine Corps, the Navy, and the people who keep us free. Two other comments I would like to, to remind Council is that at your next meeting on Tuesday, December 3rd, that meeting will occur at 5.30 p.m. That will be the swearing-in ceremony for the three officials who were re-elected in the past November election. With that, we always thank you, Mayor, and you, members of Council, for the leadership you give. You're wonderful to work with. Our staff is wonderful, as you saw in the presentations tonight. And we truly thank you for what you do for this city. John? Thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.